Newton vs. Einstein vs. Stephen Hawking, first off forget the apple. One probably didn't really fall on the head of Sir Isaac Newton in 1665 knocking loose enlightenment about the nature of falling bodies. And while you're at it, forget what you learned about gravity in school. That's not how it really works. But don't take our word for it. Let the main contenders in the history of gravitational theory duke it out themselves. Round 1 Newton Gravity really does exist Newton stated in 1687 it acts according to the laws which we have explained, and abundantly serves to account for all the motions of the celestial bodies before Newton, no one had heard of gravity let alone the concept of a universal law. Cambridge University, where Newton studied, was closed due to plague in 1665. Finding respite at his childhood home, the 23-year-old plunged into months of feverish mathematical brainstorming. This plus a dubious apple descent in the back orchard, laid the foundation for his masterwork Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica. In Principia Newton described gravity as an ever-present force, a tug that all objects exert on nearby objects. The more mass an object has, the stronger its tug. Increasing the distance between two objects weakens the attraction. Principia's mathematical explanations of these relationships were simple and extremely handy. With his equations, Newton was able to explain for the first time why the Moon stays in orbit around Earth. To this day, we use Newton's math to predict the trajectory of a softball toss or of astronauts landing on the Moon. In fact, all everyday observations of gravity on Earth and in the heavens can be explained quite precisely with Newton's theory. OK we buy it. But how does it work? Hello. Silence from Newton's corner of the ring. The truth is, Newton could describe gravity, but he didn't know how it worked. Gravity must be caused by an agent acting constantly according to certain laws he admitted. But whether this agent be material or immaterial, I have left to the consideration of my readers. For 300 years nobody truly considered what that agent might be. Maybe any possible contenders were intimidated by Newton's genius. The man invented calculus, for Pete's sake. Round 2, Einstein. Apparently Albert Einstein wasn't intimidated. He even apologized. Newton forgive me he wrote in his memoirs. You found the only way which, in your age, was just about possible for a man of highest thought and creative power. In 1915 after eight years of sorting his thoughts, Einstein had dreamed up literally he had no experimental precursors an agent that caused gravity. And it wasn't simply a force. According to his theory of general relativity gravity is much weirder a natural consequence of a mass's influence on space. Einstein agreed with Newton that space had dimension, width, length, and height. Space might be filled with matter, or it might not. But Newton didn't believe that space was affected by the objects in it. Einstein did. He theorized that a mass can prod space plenty. It can warp it, bend it push it, or pull it. Gravity was just a natural outcome of a mass's existence in space. Who can visualize Einstein's gravity warp by stepping on a trampoline? Your mass causes a depression in the stretchy fabric of space. Roll a ball past the warp at your feet and it'll curve toward your mass. The heavier you are, the more you bend space. Look at the edges of the trampoline the warp lessens farther away from your mass. Thus. The same Newtonian relationships are explained, and predicted mathematically with better precision, yet through a different lens of warped space. Take that Newton says Einstein. With regrets. Einstein's theory also triumphantly punched a hole in Newton's logic. If as Newton claimed, gravity was a constant, instantaneous force the information about a sudden change of mass would have to be somehow communicated across the entire universe at once. This made little sense to Einstein. By his reasoning, if the Sun disappeared suddenly, the signal for the planets to stop orbiting would logically have to take some travel time. And it would definitely take longer to arrive at Pluto than it would Mars. 
nothing universally instant about that at all. What did Einstein propose as the missing agent of communication enter, again, this very useful space warp? Much like a stone thrown into a pond the change in mass will cause a ripple in space that travels out from its source in all directions at light speed. As it moves along, the ripple squeezes and stretches space. We call such a disturbance a gravitational wave. With this final blow, Einstein's general relativity explained everything Newton's theory did and some things it didn't end better. I am fully satisfied Einstein said in 1919. I do not doubt anymore the correctness of the whole system. Round 3, Stephen Hawking. British physicist Stephen Hawking will step down from one of the most famous academic posts in the world this week. The brief history of time author is scheduled to leave Cambridge University's Lucasian Professorship of Mathematics, a position that has been held by only 17 men including the father of physics Isaac Newton. Holders of the post traditionally stamp down at the age of 67, which Hawking reached in January. Hawking has held the post at Cambridge's Department of Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics DAM, since 1979, where he supervises PhD students. It is often referred to as a chair. He will take up a new role as director of research in the DAM where he will continue to lead efforts in cosmology and gravitation. He also remains the principal investigator for the Cosmos National Cosmology Supercomputer and will play an active role in the Center for Theoretical Cosmology, which aims to advance understanding of the universe, the university said. Hawking has a neuromuscular dystrophy that has progressed over the years and has left him almost completely paralyzed. He said in an emailed statement this is an exciting time in cosmology with new observational results coming in thick and fast and large-scale terrestrial and satellite experiments underway. With luck, we will soon be able to answer some of the ultimate questions about the universe and our existence.